Trump warned cuts were coming and they didn't listen, now he's just saved $22 million. When President Trump took office, one of his greatest promises was to cut waste in his administration. His White House expense cuts could possibly save up to $22 million. This would make American taxpayers very happy and compared to the Obama administration, it's earth-shaking. Obama was very good at spending money. Trump is good at cutting costs and when he has to spend money, he does it wisely and with offsets. Since coming into office, President Trump has donated his salary to U.S. departments and agencies. For example, he donated his fourth quarter 2017 salary to the Department of Transportation, according to USA Today. The rest of the Trump family is also leading by example by foregoing their salaries. First daughter and presidential adviser Ivanka Trump and son-in-law senior adviser Jared Kushner both refused a salary. Trump has also worked with the First Lady and has cut her staff as well, thereby saving more money according to Forbes. Melania employs 10 staffers as opposed to Michelle Obama having 24. Those Obama staffers were paid a total of $1.6 million in 2009. Trump has had big reductions in other areas including the absence of czars and expensive fellows. The left complains that Trump is not filling position vacancies. That is by design. He fills those positions that are necessary and have merit. The others he allows to atrophy and go away simply by not filling them, thereby saving that money. Trump has 95 fewer employees than former President Barack Obama's 2010 White House. So far, Trump's frugal ways have already saved taxpayers $11 million, according to Forbes and he's on track to save $22 million as stated previously. The highest paid Trump staffers are his 23 assistants to the president, or high-level staffers, including Sarah Huckabee Sanders, John Bolton, John Kelly, Larry Kudlow, Steve Miller, and Kellyanne Conway. They each make $179,000 annually. But unlike Obama's staffers, they don't magically become millionaires while on the White House payroll. Funny how that works, huh? I've written previously on how Trump has issued a series of executive orders that reduce the amount of time it takes an agency to fire people regardless of union affiliation. That is now being utilized. No longer does a government worker have a job whether they should have one or not. They now have to earn it and can be fired like anyone else. Today, the president is fulfilling his promise to promote a more efficient government by reforming civil service rules, said Andrew Brimberg director of the President's Domestic Policy Council. Every year, the Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey shows that less than one-third of federal employees believe poor performers are adequately addressed by their agency. These executive orders make it easier to remove poor performing employees, and ensure that taxpayer dollars are more efficiently used. From my previous article on Trump's executive orders. The first thing on the agenda is reducing the time it takes to fire poor performers and employees suspected of misconduct by standardizing the length of performance improvement plans to 30 days across the federal government. Right now it varies agency to agency and takes somewhere between 60 and 120 days usually. A GAO report shows that it takes six months to a year to remove someone from government, and can often take another nine months on appeal, an official said. This, also encourages agencies to fire someone for misconduct when they have been engaged in behavior that warrants it, instead of just suspending them. Talk about cleaning house. The official said the administration would also make performance a more important factor than seniority when agencies undertake layoffs. According to DML News. The second executive order directs federal agencies to renegotiate contracts with unions representing government employees so as to reduce waste. The anonymous administration official expressed hope that, for example, agencies could stop having to pay expenses on both sides when unions undertake appeals on behalf of fired workers. The third order aims to cut down on official time, in which government workers who have roles in the union, like helping colleagues file grievances, are allowed to perform those roles during normal working hours for which they draw their usual salary. An analogous concept exists for private sector unions, the order limits official time to 25% of their hours during the year. 
all of those are now taking effect and in the process are saving taxpayers money by employing those who actually competently do their jobs. These moves alone have the potential to save at least $100 million in taxpayer money. This year, not only did the president maintain a lean staff, he cut the total payroll budget from $35.7 million, 2017, to $35.2 million. In FY 2015, Barack Obama's payroll was much larger and exceeded $40.9 million with 477 staffers. Trump's White House payroll has been a leading indicator of his commitment to do more, with less. In the first few weeks of his term, Trump issued an order mandating an executive agency hiring freeze. Trump asked his agency heads to seek efficient use of existing personnel and funds to improve public services. The media is also constantly growing about Trump's legal problems, but White House payroll shows no evidence that the president is using taxpayer dollars to lawyer up. In fact, the number of lawyers on staff remained roughly the same at 32 this year versus 33 last year. President Trump's personal moves in his administration are an indicator of how he views and is working on the entire federal government and what he plans to do to help America. He's cutting waste and costs, while improving trade and income. He warned everyone he was going to cut waste and that is exactly what he did. But he's also put forth a booming economy and stock market, record low unemployment and he's bringing back a ton of jobs. Trump keeps his word and America